So here it is really the servant of the Lord speaking. And he's giving us some fantastic instruction and very practical instruction. Now listen to it carefully. I'm now going to quote from the very first chapter of the book of James. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. For he who is a hearer and not a doer is like a man who observes his natural face in a mirror then goes his way and at once forgets what he is like. But he who looks into the perfect law the law of liberty and perseveres he will be blessed in his doing. Now how do I look into the law the perfect law which sets me free the law of liberty I look into my mind I'm now imprisoned I've heard the sentence I know exactly how long I'm supposed to serve. Now I look into the law of liberty in my mind. And I assume that I am free. I'm set free. How? I am not concerned. Who brought it about? I am not concerned. I simply look into the perfect law, the law of liberty. And I dare to assume that I am free. If I dare to assume that I am free... I rearranged the structure of my mind. The same mind that heard the sentence that I accepted when I heard it. Now I do not accept it. I look into the perfect law. The law of liberty. And if, as I'm told in scripture, I persevere, then I will actually receive that which I am doing. I must not forget what I have done and sleep this night as though I am in prison. For if I am now set free, where would I sleep? Let me know exactly where would I sleep. Well, dare to assume that I am sleeping there now. If I sleep in the assumption that I am free, I am not in jail. Even though the bars are there, I don't see them. Close my eyes against them. As Blake tells us, man's perceptions are not bounded by organs of perception. He perceives more than sense so ever acute can discover. And so reason or the ratio of all that we already know is not the same that it shall be when we know more. If I take this tonight and test it, and it proves itself in the testing, well then I have added to my knowledge. And so I know more than before I tested it. And so when I find myself up against something that seems beyond solution, I have found something that can solve it. All I have to do is to rearrange the structure of my mind. So I dare to assume that I am the man that I would be. And sleep as though I am. That's the rearrangement of that structure of the mind. I am the same being, I am Neville. I know exactly those that I knew before. But now I know them differently. I know them now as a freed man. But I must not be a hearer of what I heard in scripture. I must be a doer. I must do it. So be not a doer only. Be a doer in the full sense of the word. So that I actually, I'll do it and persist. The word is persevere in scripture. The first chapter, the 22nd through the 25th verses of the epistle of James. So I will simply do it. And though tomorrow I am confronted with the obvious facts of life that I'm still in prison, it still doesn't matter. I did it 
I am doing it and I will continue to do it until that which I have done is perfectly externalized within my world. I am telling you this from experience. I know it. If you go to jail and you say five to ten years, all right, you know five years, and maybe you get off in six for good behavior. But when you are drafted into the army, there is no date that you are promised where they let you out. You are in for the duration. <coughs> well, I was drafted into the army with seventeen million dollars. Well, I didn't ask the permission of anyone. I only consult consulted myself. I looked around. I knew what the world knew. It was something that had to be done. But I must be honest with myself. I didn't want any part of it, but no part of it. Others would tell me, is that the act of a coward? I didn't care what they said. Is that being a good citizen? I didn't care what they said. As I just said earlier, what we now know, which is called reason, it's a reasonable thing to do. We are at war, and we're all Americans, and we should go in there because our country has declared war. Go in there and fight. And so reason tells us that should be done. I was drafted. I did not oppose it. They drafted me. Took me down to Camp Oak, Louisiana for my base training. And while I was there, I didn't want any part of it. And I dared to assume that I am out of it. And made my normal natural application, as you have to do in the world of Caesar. Within 24 hours it came back, and it was simply rejected. It was signed, disapproved, and signed by my colonel, a very nice gentleman. His name was Colonel Theodore Bilbo, Jr. His father was Senator of Mississippi. I said nothing. My captain said, for your sake, Goddard, I am very, very sorry. I know exactly how you feel. You want to be with your wife and your little girl. Your son is in Guadalcanal with the Marines. And you are now almost 38. And so, I know, but I would like to go through this war with a man just like you at my side. So I can't say that I am sorry for myself. I'm sorry only for you. I didn't say one word to him, to the colonel. I didn't oppose it. That was the decision of Caesar. Now, I looked into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and I persevered in that law. 